Hey guys, how's it going? Previously on the channel, we were working on this 1978 John Deere 312. This is the 312 that we brought back to life in the last video. We started working on it. It came from a saw shop, not very, I want to say about 30 minutes away from here. Uh, this is the one that was sitting there. I have pictures of it. I'll put them here. This is the one that sat there. The fender pan was bent on it and a few other issues it had. So in the last video you guys saw, in the last few videos, I'm hoping that the videos that were filmed before that one are uploaded as well. We pulled the engine out of it. We got the engine unstuck. It had a whole bunch of mouse nests in it. It needed gone through, so the motor was pulled out of it. It was cleaned out. Went through, vacuumed it. I think I put the original battery tray back in it. Um, also took and put a starter on it. And I think after we did the starter, oh, we had to clean the gas tank. Something that happened, and I wish I would have filmed it, was in that gas tank, there was actually this right here, it looks like a beef stick. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but that was in there. So I think it was a beef stick. When I pulled it out, that's what it felt like. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but the carburetor kept clogging up. So I thought, okay, what's going on? So I pulled the carb off, went to look at it, and I noticed it kept having stuff in it. So I pulled the lid, went in there with a the flashlight and I noticed that in there and I thought that shouldn't be in there. So I grabbed my pliers to pull it out and of course it comes out in a whole bunch of pieces. But I finally managed to get the whole thing out and the fuel is clean now. So what we need to do, or other than that, every the fuel system's good now. I do need to do something about it though. It doesn't like to be throttled up like how my 212 was when I first got it. So the one that had the 14 horse color in it that we sold recently. So yeah. Um, what this needs is we need to get into it and we need to take the oil out of the transmission and we also need to take the oil filter off. Those are the two things that we need to do is we need to drain the fluid and get that all done. And after we get the, I also want to get the creep out of it. That's another thing I want to do because this creeps bad. You have it right here in neutral and it starts to back up very slowly. So the creep needs to be taken out of it. I think I have found how to take the creep out of it. There's a way to do it on the 140. And I think the way to do it on the 140 is the same as on here. All except for on here, it's in a different spot right here. You loosen this nut right here. And then when you loosen, you only loosen it a little bit. And this right here is your adjustment. You play with that until your wheels stop turning. So I'm going to go on ahead and guess that's probably how you adjust the transmission. That's how I'm going to do it. So, and it does go up here. So yeah, that's how I'm going to adjust it. I'm hoping it does something and it doesn't just sit there. That would suck. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. Take this tire off probably. And that's how I'm going to adjust it, have it in neutral. That's what they were saying to do. So that's what we're going to do. I don't know when I want to do that. I probably want to do that before I change the fluid in the transmission. So probably right now would be the time to do that. So I'm going to grab the pallet jack and I'm going to put this up on the jack or the forklift, one of the two. And I'm going to hold it up there and make sure it can't roll away. And while it's up there, we're going to adjust that until it stops moving. So I have to find a way to get you guys under there so you can watch me do it. So, but I have been using it. I've been kind of 
holding off on showing it to anybody or really talking about it much still. It is not on YouTube yet. This is before you guys have seen it. Because like I said before, the videos are having issues. My buddy unfortunately wasn't able to fix them, so I'm gonna take them to somebody to see if they can fix them. So that's the plan for them next. Um, so I think that is about it. So let me put you guys in the stand and I guess we're gonna put this up on the forklift and we're gonna see if we can get that creep out of it. I'm gonna go ahead and take the hood latch out of it because with the condition of that hood, it really doesn't need it. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, why don't you just replace that hood? Well, if the tractor, I'm pretty sure it's original paint and I really don't wanna replace the hood and have the paint off. So, I'm just gonna leave this hood on here. I'm gonna take these latches off though, just so that it doesn't crack it up any worse. And it, plus this is cracked right here, so it really shows, you know, it gives the tractor some character, you know, it gives it something to look at. So don't just look at it as damage, you know, look at it as it tells a story like a tree fell on it or something like that. Or maybe somebody was drinking. I don't know. Or got mad and slammed the hood. So that's kind of what I have to say about it. I like the original look, you know. So I don't like to change stuff. I like to just keep stuff alone. There is some exceptions though to that, but I don't know. I do like to keep things original though. I do want to do that battery tray though because that is starting to rot away. Stop that rust, so. Now that that's out, we can put the... Okay, now that that's out, we can put the battery in. So, there we go. So we get our positive hooked up first. This one right here goes to the positive. That one over there is a negative. Let me grab my wrench. It decided it wanted to jump away. And after we grab the wrench, we'll tighten that down. And we'll also tighten down that terminal over there. negative terminal on and then tighten that one down also. So there we go. To take the hydraulic fluid out of it, and I will show you guys this up on the forklift. Uh, there's a cooling tube on the transmission you take off. You loosen the tube or just completely take it off, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing. Take that off and then you're, that's the bottom of the transmission, so your fluid is going to drain out. And you also take the transmission fluid filter off. I'm not sure how tight that filter is on this one. Hopefully it's finger tight. They say you're supposed to just tighten it up to the point where you can't with your hand anymore. So that's how tight it should be. I don't know how tight it is. Let's see if it'll start. And if it'll start, we'll get it ready to go up onto the forklift.
go. That works perfect. I don't know why it shakes so much, but it's a pretty good shaker. Let me grab the forklift. I know it's not rolling right now. I have the transmission disengaged. I know you shouldn't, but that's how I've been doing it lately. Hopefully now we won't have to do it anymore. So let me grab the forklift. We'll lift the rear end up. We'll take this tire off right here. After we do that, we should be good to go. So I can see when it stopped. Mm, we'll take it off, hell with it. So we'll take the tire off. And then I guess that'll give us more room. So bring you guys down as far as I can. I'm going to grab something to lay on. After I do that, I'll bring you back. I don't know what all you guys can see. I doubt you can see that little piece under there that needs to be adjusted. But let me point it out, and I guess when I check the footage later, when I'm editing, I can see if I see it or not. This piece right here, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but that's what we're going to be adjusting. You guys, actually, I think the angle, oh yeah, you can. Maybe. So that's what we're going to be adjusting. I think the outer one is a 7... Sixteenths, I want to say, and then the inner one I think is just a little bit bigger. I need to find the wrench sizes so that I can have them ready. You loosen the one on the outside, and then the one on the inside is the one that moves the arm and adjusts it. So once you get it where you want it, half inch is the one on the outside. Once you get it to where it stops creeping, that's where you stop. You might have to play with it a little bit until you get it right where you want it. But here's 7 eighths. Let's see if 7 eighths is the winner. Oh, awesome. <laughs> that worked. So I'm going to loosen that outer one and we'll work on the inner one. Right now I have it in neutral. Ready?
piece under there that that pulls on is broken. That's not good. We're gonna have to find a different one. The piece that goes up from that and adjusts that is broken off. So, I'm trying to find where it hooks. anything. I'm wondering if I loose if I mess with the linkage that goes from our little handle up here back if that'll fix it or not. I'm under here looking at this plate and it's not I don't know where or how to get this out of here. So I guess we're gonna have to ask around maybe I know somebody who can assist me with that this sucks I hope I don't have to pull the transmission to replace that but where does this hook up to yeah right there unless it goes up here and it just came out from under that I wonder if that could be it <clears throat> Maybe. No, definitely not. So, yeah. Something under here is broken. I can already see that. So I'm just going to leave that right there. It turns. Unless it's supposed to go up there. And it's not. Which that sh can't be. Hmm. So... Something here, what is this? That's all the way forward. That's all the way back. That's a neutral. I guess I'm just gonna tighten that and leave it alone. Because I guess there's nothing I can do about that. So I guess now what I'm going to do is we'll put it up on the lift and we're going to go on ahead and take care. So I guess now what we're going to go on ahead and do since we can't adjust that is we're going to put it up on the forklift. We're going to drain the fluid out of it overnight. Then after we get the fluid drained out of it, we'll put the new fluid in. Hopefully by tomorrow we'll have our new fluid. I don't know when it's going to get here. But I guess it wouldn't hurt just to let the transmission drain. And then while the transmission drains, I'll ask around and find out about that adjustment. But it does suck though, so it means that it's going to have to, some surgical work is going to have to be done. I wonder almost if that's why this tractor was parked is because of that. I don't know. I am going to have to mess with it though and figure something out about that creep. So we could adjust that linkage, but I don't know how that's going to do. So, I mean, we could try it, but I guess for now, we're not going to worry about that. We'll mess with that later. Let's go on ahead and get that filter taken off. We'll also get that taken off down there. And I'm going to show you guys how to drain this fluid, at least what I've seen and what I've come up with. Also, yes, the engine is leaking. That is actually where the fuel pump goes. There's no gasket right there between the pump and the tractor engine, so that's why that is leaking, so don't worry about that.
to break this work. Looks good to me. <laughs> So, cool. So in order to get the fluid out of the transmission, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna loosen this, like I said before, I've never done this before. This is kind of what I've gathered up together and kind of figured out. Move the camera, I don't know what you guys can see, but this right here is what we take off. And then you also wanna take the filter off the filter should be finger tight. Yeah, I, I can turn that. Cool. So we're gonna loosen this fitting right here. I'm gonna put a bucket underneath so I can catch the fluid that comes out of it. Let me go get a bucket here quick, and once I do, I'll be right back. I've heard mixed responses when it comes to taking the thing completely off, the pipe completely off, or just leaving it on there partially, partially, but I'm just gonna take it off just off that bottom one. I'm not going to take it off the top because I don't want to have to fight with putting it back. I'm going to guess right there is probably right below it. I might end up lifting this up a little bit more. Plus some wrenches until we can find one that fits. I don't know if we take this off right here or the inner one right here. I'm gonna guess you could probably take off either or. So, one inch. Like a glove. So let's put, you know, that's the one that we need. So we'll take this off first. I imagine righty tighty. Lefty Lucy, right? Maybe it's there. We go. We got it. Thought it would be backwards, but I guess not. This is right is tight, so we'll go on ahead and loosen this guy. Hopefully, that should drain our transmission fluid. So, see where this goes. might do it, it might not. I guess we'll just have to see where we go from here. Ready? There it goes, it's dripping. It's red, so I'm gonna guess it's transmission fluid that they have in there. Why does everybody put transmission fluid in these? Not a lot in there at all. See if we can, there, we got it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take, oh, I have it tipped back. Let's take the filter off. Since we're in here, let that drip a little bit too. Yeah, that's where most of it is. <laughs> Whoops, my bad. 
<laughs> Let me grab that filter here before it stains my carpet. Yeah, it's definitely transmission fluid. Automatic transmission fluid, as y'all can see. Well, we're going to be putting the high guard in it. That's what I ordered, so. Oh, well. I guess that's fine. That's what Deer recommends. Deer recommends the hydro guard, so. That's what I'm going to put in it. I'm probably also going to go on ahead and tip this thing, tip the forks forward a little bit so it can drain a little bit more because I'm sure that there's more in there. So let me tip them forward here quick. I don't think there's anything else under there I want to do anymore. So let me tip that forward. See, I tipped it forward and more started coming out. I'm probably going to tip it forward a little bit more even. I won't leave it like that overnight, but... See? Looks like a murder scene. So I'm going to let that drain, close up the door. I'm going to let that probably drain until I get new fluid for it, which I don't know how long that's going to be. It might be a little while, so. I guess for now, this is it. Then once I get my fluid, I'll bring you guys back, because I'm sure you don't want to watch this. So I let the 312 go overnight and drain. I brought it down closer to the ground. That way, if the brake ended up letting go, it would be on the ground so it wouldn't really go anywhere it would just kind of roll down it did hold itself up last night so that's good brakes are still locked on it um, I left it sit overnight I'm gonna go on ahead and just say I think the transmission's done draining now I might end up putting a little drip pan under it once I put it where I want it it to stay for the next uh, however long I'm working on it waiting for this or waiting for this fluid I still don't have my transmission fluid yet. I really should have waited until I had that to do this. But I guess that's fine. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna get it off the forklift or I'm gonna lift the forklift up and I'm gonna put that fitting back on. I don't have a filter for it currently. I'm not putting that one back on. So I'll just leave it without a filter. Uh, watch that stuff come in today. <laughs> So, I need my forklift, and I want to go on ahead and get that button back up, so that way it's all ready to go. So let me get this thing back up in the air, and after I do that, we'll put the fill, we'll put the thing back on. We'll hook it all up. So now we are back under here. So let's go on ahead and get this guy tightened up. Let me find my wrench. And I already know the camera arm might be in the way. Well, maybe not. We'll see. There is some hydro fluid, hydraulic fluid that got on the floor. Which I guess is okay. It'll dry up over time. Damn it. Get in the way. Hopefully you guys still see it. Let me move this. I'm pretty sure it had ATF in it. I think I got most of it out. I'm going to be putting the John Deere High Guard in it. So hopefully it won't hurt it having that in it instead. Again, that's what they're supposed to have, so I don't think it will. I probably should have put some Teflon tape on that just to hold it up a little bit better from leaking, but we might be, I don't know, that might be a little bit overkill. This should have a flare in the line like how brake lines do on cars. 
So I don't really think that, it, I think it should seal. It should be okay. Tighten that right here. What wrench is this? That's a bigger wrench. I almost thought about taking this line, this entire line off. And right here is the top of the pump. So that's all on there and that is all ready to go. I don't think there's anything else we need to do besides wait for the filter. So I guess that should be it. Now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and bring this thing down. And once we get the new transmission fluid for it, I'll bring you back. It's going to feel weird not being able to use it. Well, it's only been a couple seconds for you guys, but it feels like it's been about a year to me. <laughs> uh, recently, we ordered some transmission fluid for the, for the 312. I got my transmission fluid. You can see it right there. And I also got a fuel, a uh, oil filter for the transmission. So I guess we can go on ahead and put that on there. That was supposed to be here yesterday. But it ended up coming in today, and I'm a little bit pissed about that because I was really looking forward to getting it going yesterday. But I guess today is going to be the day. They know you want something, so they have to hold it another day to piss you off. I guess that's why. So right here is where you put the fluid in. But as you can see, the gas tank is in the way as well as this. So I think we're going to have to end up taking this off so I can get my funnel in there and put the oil in it. So, damn it. I wish it was like the 140s, but that's fine. I'm probably going to end up having to drain the gas out of the tank into a little can. I don't know if, well, I guess we'll find out. We'll see. So let me go on ahead and I'm going to get the knobs and everything taken off. We'll get the fender pan pulled off of it and then we'll drop the uh, we'll put the oil in it and then we'll let that fill once that fills up to full we'll take the fender pan gas tank put them back and then take it out drive it around and see how it runs and drives with new fluid so cool so I'm just gonna time lapse taking this off because I'm sure you guys really don't want to see this I'm sure some of you do, but if you're like me, but you want to see it time lapsed, so. I guess we'll just have to see where this takes us. I'm sure somebody's going to send me a, a comment and say, you know, you didn't have to take the gas tank out, right? This is the way you do it. <laughs> but let me see. Where, there's my phone. I've never done this before. Like I said, bear with me. I'm, if this is your first time doing it, I'm not the guy to watch. I would highly recommend watching somebody else instead of this, but I'm sure there's plenty of other videos on YouTube showing how to do this properly. I'm just kind of the average hillbilly out there that's doing this for the first time and filming it because I do, I like making these videos. 
and doing this type of stuff, but maybe I'm doing it right, maybe I'm not. Like I said, so let me grab a chair. Oh, do I want a chair? Yeah, I want a chair. Might as well. So, there's a little sight tube in there. And on the sight tube, you want to have the fluid in the middle of the tube. Once you start seeing it in the tube, you want it up to about right here. Once it's up to that point, you're good. This, this tube I made, hell, I don't even know if it's gonna be able to go through that or not. I don't know if it is. It's got a lot of kinks in it. This line just really doesn't do all that well. I wish it was more flexible and it didn't kink up like that, so. So let's go ahead and put our fluid in. That's pink. What color is that? That's yellow. I guess I should have. Whatever. Ready? There we go. Whoa, wait. Oh shit. I forgot to put the filter back on. My bad. I knew something didn't seem right. Let me put the filter back on real quick. Putting the oil filter for the transmission on is the exact same as taking it off. I went, yeah, I see. Oh, it's pissing the old fluid out. I went and I ordered a Stenz filter. I know it's not John Deere, but it is, uh, it, I like Stenz, I've used Stenz. Uh, it replaces, what's the part number? John Deere AM39. 653. It replaces that one. It also replaces a few others. I like Stens. I think Stens is a good company. I may actually end up just doing that and letting it pump all that fluid that's in there right now out until I start seeing it because I'm seeing the red fluid. Let me bring you guys back. I'm seeing that fluid that's in there right now on the floor. So it's pushing it out. So I think I'm just gonna do that until I see more or less come out. Yeah, I don't see no more. And it looks like that just came out. Oh, I'm starting to see it in that too. Yeah, let me go on ahead and I'm just gonna Put the filter on because it's going to start pissing it out here in a minute. I already see the thing is up to the almost up to where I want it. So you only want it to be on there hand tight. You don't want to over tighten it. You don't want it to be on there very tight. The one that was on here before, I think it was only on there hand tight. I'm just going to tighten it to where I can't turn it. Right there. There we go. I can't turn it no more, so I'm just gonna go on the record and say it's tight enough. And it looks like our fluid is going up my little redneck tube, so I guess that's good. So we'll just keep an eye on that. And when it gets to where I want it.
Also, I found out for that thing where you adjust out the creep, there's a spring I think I'm missing. So, because I looked at it and I talked to somebody about it, and he said, I think you're missing a spring. And that spring should be the only piece you need. So, I'll probably end up looking at that 317 I have and seeing if it's got a piece that I need. And if it does, then I'll take it off and put it on here. If it don't, well, then down. Yeah. This is one, right? Yeah, it lives on there. Well, let me open the door and I guess we'll try to test our luck and we'll see how it goes. It's dark outside. Let's try it out and let's see if it'll start. I know it'll start, but. Let's just go on ahead and see how things go. We gotta remember it's got creep. That's well here. We'll pin you guys we'll pin you guys up here so you can get a little bit more of a, a picture of things. Ready? Let's see what it does. We'll probably need to choke it, I imagine. Ready? Notice it's not creeping. I find that pretty weird. A simple little fluid change makes it stop creeping. How weird. Give it a second. It'll probably start. It's still got a little bit of creep, not bad. So, let me get the 208 moved and I'll back it outside. We'll try it out. Oh, I got the brake on, that's why. See, that's why the brake was on. I know, delete your hate comments. I know the brake was on, I saw it. No, you didn't. So, let me stop the camera here quick as my sister moves it. You were supposed to say, you didn't know the brake was on. I was waiting for you to. Oh, sorry. You were supposed to tell me it was creeping too. For those of you who didn't know, yes, I do have a sister. So let me go on ahead. I'm gonna get the 208 moved. And we'll put this out, we'll drive it around a bit, we'll see how it does. Oh, we can't, we don't have a thingy. So guys, this is future me. I, start, I decided to take the top back off of it and I put a little bit more fluid in the transmission. I ended up using that full gallon. I fixed my sight tube, I just made a different one and stuck it on there with a little peephole instead of having the tube that stuff that likes to kink up and not bend. So I put that on there and I used a gallon 
And in the second gallon, I used barely even a quart of that and it was full. So not full to the top of the dipstick, but it was full to the point where it should be on the sight tube. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, I think that is just about it. So I don't really think there's anything else to do in this video except for put the skins back on it, which not really a big deal. You guys know what it looks like with the skins. So I think this is probably where I'm going to end up leaving this video. Uh, you guys saw me put fluid in it. It's not hard. I pulled the, when I put fluid in it, I pulled the top hose off of the, the uh, transmission, the pumpkin or the pump, whatever it's called. I've heard it called, a, I've heard people call it a pumpkin and I've heard a few other names for it. So I pulled that top, that hose, the sight tube off the top of the pumpkin and then I let it it started not air bubbling anymore and fluid started going in it. So I just did that, kept on filling it until I saw stuff show up in my little sight tube. Then once the sight tube was halfway up, I stopped, but it did end up going up a little bit higher than halfway, which is okay. I don't think it'll hurt it. It didn't go up very much more, so it should be fine. Um, yeah, a gallon just didn't sit right with me, so I gave it another look and put more in it after I ran it. So, I think this is where I'm going to end the video. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all in the next video. Hopefully you learned something from this video showing how to do the transmission change and get the flu filter out, or the fil fluid out and the filter off, so... That's it. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.